government can provide parks but it can't have the resources to manage them all and we really aim at local ownership so that the people uh, with our small population and our small money base can support the park system. The Friends of Aldinga Scrub Conservation Park would have to be one of our leading groups in the entire state. They have a history going back round about 20 years. In 1994, the group won the award of Friends Group of the Year. And in 2003, the same group won the award as Friends Group of the Decade. The percentage of Friends work that involves restoration would be fairly high at the moment and in the years to come it will be ongoing management. To establish what needs to be done there's a joint liaison between the leaders of the Friends Group and their district ranger. To work in national parks the Friends Group's members don't need to have any specific skills and qualifications. There's a policy of welcoming all help from all age groups, gender, or where people live. And once in the group, they have a substantial training that helps them to, to achieve the skills that we need. And for those that don't have any particular skills, there's always something they can do, and it's always welcomed. To return the scrub as near as possible to its original condition, you can never recreate an environment perfectly, but you can go a long way toward it. And already in these adjoining pieces, we're, we're hearing blue wrens and things like that, which of course when it was open country, they simply weren't here. We collect seed from the scrub. Uh, we distribute it among the members. Each uh, member who's in the, the planting group will have maybe three or four boxes uh, to uh, care through the winter, ready for planting sometime usually in June, July or even August, depending on the weather. There's a lot of good people that studied the scrub for a number of years, birdies and, and botanists and every kind of person. And, uh, you know, they came out with a very good report right down to the insect life and everything. So that was a good starting point. And we still have that as a very useful reference. Uh, and we make use of it and try and work by it. Mm. Well, this has been sprayed now just a day or so ago because we're working on this last strip. And the belt grass has become really uh, widespread in the scrub. It's quite a problem and we must deal with it before we do any new planting, otherwise we're wasting our time with the new plants. Preparation, we've learned, is at least as important as growing the plants in the first place. So getting rid of veldt grass and other weed problems is part of the, uh, of the way we work now. The whole of the scrub is not the same. Parts of it are quite wet, other parts are quite dry. And so if we're planting into a dry area, we go for the dries, if it's damper, we can do something different. Always referring back to where it occurred, under what conditions in the scrub itself. We're limited, in a sense, by the number of people we have against the acreage of the, of the scrub, the size of the scrub. We keep a very close eye on new plantings to see uh, if there's been uh, a good take or perhaps for some reason a failure. Uh, Another thing we learned, of course, was when we plant, we water in. Even if it's raining, we still water in. We've been learning to do these things a bit better each year for nearly 20 years now. I don't think that the parks could manage today without friends groups. The state has a huge network of parks and a small number of ranges to support it and we need voluntary effort that goes in from the friends groups and I really don't think we could ever manage without the friends now. Mm -hmm.